Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter video and another episode of Who or What Is That Monster? Today, I want to talk about an incredibly awesome monster, a boss monster, and one that I hope you all had a chance to experience, but in the event you didn't play through Monster Hunter Stories 2, then you may have missed out on this magnificent creature. I am of course talking about the monster that emerged from the pit of the forbidden grounds of Hakolo Island, the Cradle of Destruction, Altura. Not only was this creature fantastic to fight, but visually it was also a real spectacle. And while I do think it's incredibly unlikely we'll ever see it exist in anything other than Monster Hunter Stories 2, if Capcom ever fancy bringing this into a mainline title and let us fight it in real time, I would love it. But regardless, today we're going to talk about this monster in the event you never got to fight it. So if you guys do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated, and be sure to comment down below and let us know what you think of this monster. Also, if you haven't done so already, don't forget we still have some of the ponchies left. These are our officially licensed Monster Hunter plushies that we produce with Capcom. There are four awesome designs, cute little palicos with monster ponchos that are fully removable. So if you like these and want to grab one, then the link to the endgame store is in the description box down below. Be sure to grab them while stocks last because once they are gone, they are gone. Now, let's talk about Altura. If you never made it to the end of Monster Hunter Stories 2, then you missed out on something truly epic. See, Altura is a massive Elder Dragon with moth-like features on her wings. Most of her body is covered in white scales, with her underbelly and legs covered in black scales. She has a long tail that ends in two prongs, and on top of her head are two pairs of horns that glow light pink towards the end. Altura has six massive wings with moth-like shape and pattern, and these factor heavily into the fight that follows, but they also just serve to create a rather threatening image for anyone or anything that dares to battle it. When it comes to battle, initially only two wings are active, while the other four are folded up, and those will only open up when Altura powers up. There are also four tendrils at the base of the tail, and the eye spots on the wings will change colour depending on how much power and element Altura is channeling. Now for those of you that played Stories 2, you'll be familiar with this, but for those of you out the loop, Altura does not begin life in this majestic form. And Altura actually begins her life as a larval-like worm that can travel anywhere throughout the world. The Altura does this by creating giant sinkholes which will destroy anything above them in the process, including villages. Altura will also feed on Rathalos in order to become strong and reach adulthood. This of course is one of the main reasons for the perceived Rathalos migration in this game. Altura will use the Rage Ray as a hypnotic light effect to lure Rathalos in, and once they arrive near the pits, Altura will emerge to either eat the Rathalos whole or drain their energy. And while a significant number of any kind of Rathalos will seemingly do, a Raze Wing Rathalos, the poster boy for the game, is of course particularly effective in accelerating Altura's growth. Altura's Rage Rays also of course have an effect on nearby monsters, changing them into Rage Raid monsters, though unlike with Rathalos, other monsters are simply driven into a frenzy. These rays, along with Altura's voice, can also affect humans and Wyvarians, which of course led to a cult forming devoted to worshipping her. However, the cult was of course very misguided, as Altura's only desire was to live. Altura is a creature whose very existence upsets the balance of the world and causes great disaster and calamity throughout her life cycle. While an adult Altura is smaller than her larval state, it is, however, significantly more powerful. She can use different elemental attacks and create an aura to protect herself from attacks capable of vaporizing arrows in milliseconds, which can be broken should the eye on her wings be targeted. And her presence alone is also capable of causing large-scale changes in the environment and the weather, similar to Alatreon. This, paired with her all-consuming desire to live, her intensely aggressive approach to defending itself, destructive effect on the world around her, and disregard for all other living things, make her a threat to the entire world and makes coexistence nearly impossible. It's for this reason that she is a fitting final boss for the Monster Hunter Stories 2 saga. What I will say though, is that while you might only fight her once, it is a massive shame that the game never created any armor and weapons for this awesome monster. When you consider how incredible its design is, you know the armor and weapons would have been out of this world, and while it does make sense since it's not something you're really going to go and farm, it is still a massive shame we never got to see the full potential of this monster outside of a very specific boss battle. And it's for that reason, I would personally love to see it make an appearance in a mainline title. Again, I do highly doubt that will ever happen, but one can wish. But anyway, for the time being, that is pretty much it. That's a quick rundown on who Altura is, in the event you might not have fought this monster. Again, if you guys did enjoy this video, a like would be super appreciated. If you've missed some of the recent videos, you can check out one of these ones linked on screen. And otherwise, do be sure to keep it locked on the channel for plenty more Monster Hunter.